shortly after comic artist Adam, played by Augustus Prue, responds to internet trolls, he begins experiencing sleep paralysis. And then while on an empty rock, while an empty rocking chair moves in the corner of his apartment, as he chronicles increasingly malevolent occurrences in a series of tweets, Adam begins to believe he is being haunted by the ghost of a dead child named David. And this, Adam happens to be working at BuzzFeed and his boss encourages him to continue this Dear David thread of tweets. And that's where we get this new film, Dear David, which is from Lionsgate and is in theaters on demand and digital October 13th. That's Friday the 13th, 2023. Welcome, everybody, to the Scare Guy Show, the official presentation of thescareguy.com. My name is Jim Fry. Who do we have up here, Cheeseman? Hey, everybody. It's Cheeseman, one of the Scare Guys, also a screenwriter in the film industry, hoping to be writing again soon. That's right. Yeah. WGA strike is over. We are back to writing. And today we are joined by the director of the new horror thriller, Dear David, Mr. John McPhail. John, welcome to the show. Thanks thanks for having me, boys. I really appreciate this. We are so excited to be talking with you today. And um, we're going to get right to it. Can you first tell us about the actual Dear David Twitter feed sensation? What, where did this film come from? Well, like, um, this came from, a, a, like, this sort of, like, viral sort of Twitter thread that um, was happening in 2017. Um, like, a comic book art, um, a artist, um, Adam Ellis, started sort of, like, documenting, like, um, like he was, like, the, the stories of this kid. He was having sleep paralysis, and he could see this kid at the end of his bed, and it was, like, um, and then li literally everybody, like, on, on Twitter just got, got involved in it. Um, I know, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was crazy. And while that was going on, um, um, Mike Van Ways, who wrote the script, he was actually writing it a lot along with what was actually happening. Oh. Um, uh, so he'd reached out to Adam a couple of times to find, uh, to, to ask him questions. And then that script went off and went around everywhere and then came all the way back and landed on my desk. So what you're saying is like w there was this Twitter sensation happening and I, appear th thousands and thousands, if like half a million people were following this Twitter story. And it was uh, Adam. He thought he was talking with a, a dead, the ghost of Adam, a dead boy. And the script was being written kind of like following along while this was happening. Yeah. So like uh, Bryce, right at the end of the second act, Bryce is like... Um... Uh, like, oh, so how does this end? And that was Mike literally going, eh, eh, how does this end? <laughs> like, you know, um, uh, which was, you know, it's really, really funny. Um, so, yeah. I, can, I, I, I gotta ask, I noticed the accent. Where are you coming to us from? Uh, Glasgow, Scotland. Yeah, nice. That's nice. amazing. She's going to keep her willy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You used me, Skinner. <laughs> now, now, sleep paralysis is such like an interesting kind of topic and hasn't been in like a whole lot of you know horror films and all that. Like, how did did you do research on it? Do you have personal experience with it? How did you kind of decide to kind of go about kind of putting this in the film and kind of portraying the experience of it? Well, funny enough, I, I suffer from sleep psychosis. It's not really like it's kind of like sleep paralysis in the sense of like it's in I'm I, I, like, still dreaming, but I'm, I'm sort of awake. Um, and what it is, I can't breathe. Um, it feels like I'm being like like I've been strangled or like like I'm, I'm pressure down on my chest and like I can't I can't talk, I can't shout, and I'm trying to scream usually. And then my fiance is waking me up like going like What are you doing? You're screaming in your sleep. Um, uh, oh, and it's it's just quite like it's, and it, it only ever happens to me when I'm like. I'm really exhausted. Like when you shoot a film, like after shooting this film, <laughs> I got it yeah. quite a few times. But I think it was just because it was all sort of in my head. Yeah. Um. But uh, Augustus Pru, uh, he suffers from sleep paralysis. Like, and he's had that a few times with you know, like the people at the bottom of the bed, and I can't move. Um, mm -hmm. um. And Adam, the way that he wrote about it, like you know, like it just sort of like like I'm quite a visual person. So when I read the script, like all those sort of like um first. Sort of thoughts I had when I when I was reading the Twitter thread, like all cuts sort of came flooding back, and um, and and I, I really wanted to try and sort of just try and encapsulate that and try and get that right, that feeling of claustrophobia and unable to move and, and really really helpless. Oh, nice! Can you tell us about working with um your 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 main actor Augustus Prue? Oh, like oh, working with Augustus was a dream. Like he was a, like such a pro. Um, so uh, he. He when he got this script, he just went through like a whole host of trauma, and he said he was feeling so much so good about himself. He was feeling like you know like in a place, like a, a really really good place. And then he read this script, and he was like, 
oh my god, I the I can see so many things of just what I've just kind of gone through things about me and Adam. Um, and obviously he's a big believer in, in uh, he's a big believer in ghosts and um, in, in spirits and um, suffers from sleep paralysis. So like as a director, I'm I'm so lucky. I've literally got a guy who's running into set going, I've got a million and one ideas. What about this? What about this? And you know that's that's an absolute joy when you've got an actor that's just that you know excited about it um, and excited about doing it. And when like as we shot the end first as well. So for like the first two weeks, it was just him, a child, two cats, and a computer screen that he was acting with. Like, you know, and we had him like crying and screaming like for days and days, you know. Um, yeah. you know, so like, you know, for the first two weeks we just put him through hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have this picture of him here. He looks like he's <laughs> exactly yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's great. Hey, um speaking of shooting. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the shoot? Where did you guys shoot, and how long was the shoot, and how difficult or how challenging? Um, I mean, um, it was shot for twenty five days in um, just at, like in Burlington, um, in, uh, just outside Toronto. Um, it was like a retirement village, and they've got this like this church, this like big church, and like on a hill, and it's got its own like studio. Like, <laughs> like it's like, it's, like I, I'd never thought thought churches would have their own tv studio at all but yeah so like we built the sets and all that in, the, in this in this big massive studio um uh and uh yeah, it, was a, it was a full canadian crew as well I, i'd never i've never worked with a foreign crew before like you know and I'm, obviously my job is all about communication and i've got this really thick glaswegian accent and like when i get excited i'm like i was so worried that people were just going to start glazing over and going like you know like this guy doesn't i, I can't understand him i'm just i'm just gonna nod and walk away like you know but no that none of that happened and um uh i, I had like like such an amazing time with the crew um like they were like the loveliest people, the most talented and hardworking people, and I was really, really blessed with like the, the cast and the crew, because um, again, it was just like they were just the loveliest, as, as I say, as well as, as so hardworking. We because we, we had to shoot this all in like twenty five days, we had five five day weeks, so it was you know it was it was you know uh, quick and intense, and we had a lot to sort of like uh, to sort of get through, um, but you know. Every every day always had its challenges, but because we were such a tight crew um, as well, like you know, um, you know, after the first sort of like week, you know, you've kind of all been in each other's pockets and got to know each other, and you know, you're all sort of just all supporting each other and just sort of churning through. So no matter like how hard the day was, it was always like just it was just great fun. Um, yeah, 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 that was class. Nice, nice. Cheese man. So social media is a big component in the film and also kind of building some of the horror. Like what are you, how did you kind of go about using that? And like, how do you feel about like social media? Like in real life, like, does it have a, a level of horror to itself? You know, that so uh, much of yourself is out there now. Yeah. Oh, no, no, totally. Like, like, like the way I seen it, like I seen it was like, like I, I, I'm not here to say social media, bad social media, good, you know, not, not, nothing like that. Like, you know, like I, I've got Facebook and Instagram. I, I've, I've been to it, although like I was like, no, 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 it's, that's too angry for me. Uh, and like, you know, uh, well, there's Facebook. I get to see all my friends who are all married when we kids and see them all growing up and all that. And I, that's yeah. lovely, you know. Like I, I, yeah. I, I, I can, mm -hmm. I can get behind that. But, um, but yeah, no, no, no. Um, what what it was was I could see like a parallel between like a haunting and like a trolling it in the sense that like it's two outside forces invading your own personal space. Like your home's supposed to be your sanctuary, it's supposed to be your safe place, and all of a sudden there's these things that are like sort of as I say sort of invading it. That being a ghost terrorizing you in your bed, or like your phone buzzing in your pocket, or like that pinging on your screen. I don't know about you guys as well, but you, you know, you guys are like you put yourselves out there and like you know, like uh, the, the social media and the public and things like that. And I'm sure you've had comments where it's just sort of like burrowed into the back of your head, and it's you've been, it's an hour later and you're still thinking about that comment. And you're thinking about how you're going to reply, and you're going to be like, "See you," and then they're like, rah, rah, rah. and it's haunting, <laughs> it's, it's terrorizing you. Do you know what I mean? Like you know, and it's it's, it's like and you know. Um, I, and I just thought, like, oh, because of Twitter being on Twitter, you know, maybe you know this would be a fun way to sort of take it and and, and sort of play with it and sort of play in those sort of those themes as well of like, you know, you know what kind of sort of legacy would we leave in, um, particularly for like 2017 at that time. It is a you know it's a particular time on the internet as well. Yeah, hey, look, I know that we're kind of bumping up towards the end of our time with you today. Can you, how involved was was Adam with your film, the, the actual real person? who experienced what this film is about. 
Um, I mean, he was uh, he was involved um, in the sense of um, like obviously I've got a, a, like a, a, this the script, um, but it was more about um, I, I got Buzzfeed to connect us because I wanted to get uh, I wanted to know what, what what music he liked, you know, what movies he liked. I wanted to get pictures of his apartments and find out what kind of furniture was in there. Like, there's already an existing fan base for this IP. There's already an existing fan base who have created their own versions of this story, who love this story and they've got their own theories. And I'm going to just ruin that by, you know, bringing out a film that's got nothing to do with their theories. And I really, really wanted to sort of like give them something, which was like, you know, a, a feeling of like that they know. The, the apartment that they because they'll have po- poured over all those images and they'll have if they're adam ellis fans like you know the costume that he's sort of wearing the bags and stuff like that that's all stuff that we you know um um you know tried to match as much as we could obviously we took a bit of cinematic you know we went to bit take a bit of we went to the apartment to like cinematic and things like that not an actual cramped like you know new york studio apartment but you know the color of the walls the furniture and all that sort of stuff was um, you know, we really, really wanted to get right, and things like mm-hmm. even like we part of his costume, like being able to make up like mock up, you know, fake band t shirts and stuff like that. You know, like you know, so the fans of Adam Ellis will be like, I, I, I like, I get him. Even well, that was another thing we done with his costume, like um, which was whenever he goes into the sort of the dream world, like he's he's caught his t shirts all invert and stuff like that, because like when he goes to bed, that that t shirt he's wearing the nose got like a white sleeve and a black top. And, uh-huh. and then when he's dreaming, it all flips round and. There's an inverted cat T-shirt and stuff like that as well. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And we we did promise we were going to not take you over. We, we only had you for a minute, Luke. Last question, and then this has to be like a thirty-second answer. All right, and then we will have to end. Um, is there any like themes or just any kind of takeaway? Like like, oh, I just really want people to be scared, or what are you wanting people to get out of the film? I don't know, like like I thought Adam Ellis and Ellis was a really interesting character. Like like on Twitter, as I said, I, I started following him on Twitter and Instagram. I thought he was really funny and in your face and sarcastic and satirical. And I was like, like I want to see this guy in a in a in a horror movie. I want to see that protagonist and that journey. And I, I feel like he is a really interesting character. You know, like you can sort of like him and think he's a bit of a dick, but then at the same time, you can feel really sorry for him. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. So. I hope they, they enjoy the you know the character journey um, and you know I hope to scare people, make them gross them out, make them laugh a little, you know. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Ten second answer, and then we got to go. Do you believe in ghosts? Oh, I love Ghostbusters. Yes. Yeah. One hundred percent. It's my favorite movie of all time. Ghostbusters. Yep. All right. I'm a big fan. By the way, I'm 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 a, I'm a bit Scottish myself. I love the Scottish bar across the street. I'm just gonna say congratulations on this film, Slauncha. If we had a drink, we'd be uh, holding it up. Fun, so yeah. everybody. This is, um, it's the new horror film, Dear David. It's from Lionsgate. It's in theaters on demand and digital Friday, the 13th, October, 2023. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Best of luck. I can't, can't wait to see the, to see more of, the, of your work, my friend. No, thanks, Jim. Thanks. Like, thank you so much, guys. And thanks for promoting, promoting the film. I really right. appreciate that. Bye-bye, right. my friend. Thank you. Okay, Great bye. meeting Have you. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.